Hey guys, Emmy Fisher here with Navy Nomad. Um, uh, this is a sort of incidental video to show you some of the civic improvements I've made at my Tudor themed base. Now, um, if you've noticed in a couple of my videos, there's a sort of background droning noise. Yeah, that, that, that buzz, that drone, you can hear that. That's actually my fridge. I have quite possibly the world's loudest fridge. Now, granted, my apartment's not very big, but I really don't have any control over when it turns on or off. So I do apologize for that. So in some of the videos, you're going to hear that. In some of the videos, you won't. Um, when I move in the next month, that will cease to be an issue. I'll, I'll be moving to somewhere where the fridge is in a different room and is also smaller. So um, hopefully that won't be a problem. But anyway, I just wanted to show you some of the improvements I've made in my Tudor base but while I am prepping to do my big Mayan build up on the mountain there. I found the spot I want to build. Uh, I really, really like it. It's uh, beautiful, so I hope to get there soonly. It's been a bit rough because Ragnarok Primitive Plus crashes constantly. So what I've been doing is I've actually been using the Cheat Save World to force save the game. Now I don't like using cheats whenever uh, possible, and normally I wouldn't be doing this, but I don't consider it cheating if you've got a game that crashes literally every 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, it becomes more of a necessity rather than a cheat. So I do that uh, very often because on Ragnarok anyway, Primitive Plus crashes a lot. Now I recently started a game on the center map with Primitive Plus, and I've got about two or three hours uh, into that, and it hasn't crashed yet, so I'm thinking it might be a Ragnarok-specific issue. But anyway, let's take a look at some of the additions I've made. So, we have added a Tudor-style barn. Now, I could have played around with this design a bit. I might have, I, I could have, I suppose, done the overhanging thing, but I really wanted to fit in this door on the side, so the overhanging thing wasn't really gonna work with that. But I do have that large gable that sticks up on the top there to give the roof some definition. And because it was six wide, I couldn't have a door in the center, so I like using these double doors to kind of open uh, this up. But basically, this is my uh, barn to protect my tames that I need to be inside a building. I mean, I'm not going to... These guys out here, I'm not too worried. I, I do put my Argent in there from time to time, but, you know, these guys, they're meant to be guard dogs. They're big enough. They're probably okay. But this is for the smaller tanks. So my Lamantry is in here, which now has a name. Its name is Sapphire because it's a sapphire color. I'm original like that. We've got one of the Lister stores in here. I like to spread the XP boost around. This is Muzzy. I just went to a local high school play. They did Thoroughly Modern Millie, so Muzzy's a name in my head right now. Got my Pteranodons, which don't get much use anymore now that I've got my um, Argent, but they are back up. We got the male Topaz, because he's kind of a Topaz color. We got the female Amethyst, because she's purple, and that's a lot of eggs. Okay, grab these real quick. Uh, and then we've got Iggy Pop. It's an Iguanodon. If you're going to get an Iguanodon, you might as well name it Iggy, and if you're going to name it Iggy, you might as well go all the way and name it Iggy Pop. I like to name all of my dinos after colors, objects, characters, you know, all that sort of stuff. Hello. Yeah. So, that's my uh, bar, and I kind of played around with the ceiling in here to make it look a little bit nicer, but other than that, you can fit your uh, medium... <coughs> Not your large tame. Not, I mean, the aloe is probably... The aloe would fit, but the head might stick through at least the ceiling here. Maybe not the roof, but the ceiling. And you might get stuck in the ceiling if you try to dismount the aloe. Uh, but they don't need to be there, so... Yeah, that's the barn. Other thing I've added is this dock. I'm really loving the way this looks. I think it turned out really well. I've got the ramps going up here. Next to my smokehouse. I use triangle foundations to get sort of the curvature of the along the beach just right. Got your barrels here, storage, brazier up there, uh, cooking pot if I 
ever need it for dyes and stuff. Got some benches out here. Whenever I go on docks, there's always like seating. So you can sit out here, have a cup of Earl Grey. That was a really bad accent. I can never do accents when I want to. They only just kind of happen off the cuff. Anyway, a cup of tea uh, or coffee, whatever. Contemplate the morning, eat breakfast, what a little dock there. Got some more decor up here, and I've moved my boat right up so I can actually just pop right into my boat, on my boat, and then it's a little bit of a hop to get back up here. Oh, there you go. Uh, but yeah, that's the dock. And then the last thing I've added is this sort of Tudor themed, uh, I don't know what you call this type of roof style. I'll, I'll show you what the roof looks like from above. I really like the way this looks. I'm going to call it a quad gabled roof style. But there you go. You can see it's got that sort of plus sign that merges into itself with the sloped roofs. Uh, it took a little bit of sort of playing around with this to make sure that I could get the the, f the sides uh, actually open. I built it with double door frames. But I ended up using, pil uh, the double door frames are in there, but I used pillars because the door frames I felt were too thin. They didn't look thick enough. And then the pillars are too thick because they kind of stick out on the side there. So it's not very streamlined. So you could build something like this with either the pillars or the double door frames. I think what might work best if you want sort of narrow pillars is to use the stone double door frames because they are at least square in shape and look a lot better than the, the wooden double door frames. So I might play around with that in the future, but right now this is the way I've got it. I've got a couple of grape plants in front for decor. we got some torches on the sides. Big bonfire. Got lovely seating areas. You could have a, your drinks, your, your tea and scones. You could have your you know, magazines and stuff out here, maybe a chessboard. <laughs> Pretend you're at a Cracker Barrel, I don't know. Uh, we got the Tudor Bar, which is appropriate for the Tudor-themed base. Uh, this bar is pretty much useless aside to, from putting stuff on top of it, I think. So, you know, I pretend that this is my little breakfast bar area. I can get my breakfast food, mimosas or whatever, if I drank mimosas, which I don't, but if I did. Um, so yeah, this is my little uh, Tudor-themed gazebo. Civic improvements. I've added another lumber station uh, as needed. Over there eventually is where I'm going to start doing some experimentation with the different types of building styles just to see what it looks like, how they take paint, etc. It's always good to find out how that works before you start building something so you don't realize that you built it using the wrong stuff. I think the Adobe in Primitive Plus looks different than the Adobe in Scorched Earth. I'm really hoping so because uh, maybe it'll take paint better. As you can see, we've expanded the garden as well. Now, I have yet to find an extra coffee seed to put in there, so that'll be a coffee tree. Or, I don't know, a cashew tree. They don't seem to change in size, depending on the size of the base. There are berries over there. There's one of all the kinds over here. And then these I expanded for all of the crops that require multiples because they need to be processed. So things like wheat uh, to get uh, you know, grain flour processed, uh, sugar cane for the juicer, Soybeans for uh, soy milk and tofu, you know, coffee, tea, grapes for your drinks. Um, a little bit of extra rice so I can make that chicken and rice spinach because I forgot to put spinach over on the side. Uh, barley, and then a decent amount of wheat because this is what you use to make flour and a whole bunch of stuff and yeast and all that. And they, they produce stuff really slowly. Now, obviously, if this were in a greenhouse, yeah, this has two in there, and it's been there for a good hour. It's got two, two wheat. Um, if this were in a greenhouse, obviously it would produce it a lot faster, but I haven't gotten to a, a point yet where I'm building greenhouses. And they wouldn't necessarily have had greenhouses back in the homesteading period anyway. It would have been all out in the open. So this is the expansion of the garden. It does have a name. The name is Schmiegel's Garden. Schmiegel is my sister's nickname. Um, Long story short, uh, she's had that nickname ever since Lord of the Rings came out because she does an absolutely perfect Gollum impression. Uh, it sounds just like Andy Serkis doing Gollum. So we all started calling her Smeagol and it just, uh, it stuck. So I actually call her Smeagol more than 
I can't remember the last time I actually called her by her name. She's just Smeagol. In my phone, she is Smeagol. Um, and she's totally cool with that, by the way. So, just, uh, just uh, putting it out there. But I've called it Schmeagel's Garden because, or Schmeagel's Garden, because uh, she's got a degree in plant science. Um, she loves plants. She loves gardening. She's got a degree in plant science. She uh, was in a mycology club for the longest time. We both love, uh, you know, cooking and mushrooms and things like that. She also has a degree in culinary arts. So every time I make a garden or a farm, I have to put a sign in her honor and name it Smeagol's Garden because she is the, the green thumb of the family. And she would be very proud, I think, of this uh, farm we've got here. So yeah, at this point, I think that's about as much as I'm going to do. I can't really think, nothing else has come up of anything I need. The last thing I'll do at some point, and it won't be right away, I love how there's this one rare flower that just keeps growing back there, um, is I'm gonna put a well up here on the top of uh, this little hillock here. Uh, you can make wells that stand free from water veins in Primitive Plus, which is really awesome. I, I mean, I like the ones on the water veins, but it's nice that you have ones that you can place really. They are fairly expensive, so I haven't got the materials for that yet. But uh, that is sort of the last finishing touch that we'll be getting um, at that point in time. But yeah, our little sort of homestead here, uh, I'm definitely sort of middle-class gentry kind of, uh, you know, level here. I'm definitely not poor. Um, but this is our little homestead. I wanted to show you those civic improvements. And after this, uh, really, we're, we're doing the mine build. It's going to be up there on the hill, kind of around the corner there. I found the perfect spot. So basically what I'm doing from here on out, uh, I did start a game on center map, as I mentioned. Um, because I just like starting these games and getting them started, so I've really been enjoying Primitive Plus. It doesn't crash so much on the center map as well. But uh, once I get back on Ragnarok here, I will be making all the foundations, the stone stuff, etc. And then starting to get some work done on that uh, up there. So, if you liked this video, please hit that like button. We've got double trouble here. Um, and Red Skull, because he's got like this red mark on his head. You can see it there. As if a Captain America kicked the other day. Alright, so if you like this video, please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe for future videos about historically themed bases and sort of small starter bases for you beginners out there. People that like to build small. People that play PvE solo like me. Uh, and thanks so much for watching the video. I will see you in the next one. We're going to go to the Yucatan Peninsula, right up the hill. See you later.